So if your house has forced air heating, which means it's pushing air through ducts to warm your house or cool your house, have a look at those registers. The registers are where either the air is pushed into the house or pulled out. Supply registers, the air is pushed in. Usually they're in the floor or in the ceiling, depends where your ducts are. The, the return register, that's where the air from the house after it's come in is pulled back into the furnace. So the return grill is always gonna be much bigger than your supplies. The supplies are maybe this big, that big, and there's gonna be one probably in every room. The return depends on your house. Many houses only have one return for the whole house. Sometimes newer houses, more expensive houses, have more returns all over the place, maybe even one return in every room. But regardless, it's going to be a bigger, bigger, large, and often square shape. This is usually where the filter is. The furnace filter will be often, most times, in the return grill. And that makes it much easier to access and to check if it's dirty and to replace. I'm going to go up and have a look at it right now. So here's the filter. This side, which is the bottom, bottom side, uh, would be very dirty if it was an old filter but it's beautiful. This one's barely been used. It was probably just changed. This is a great new filter. These are very cheap. They cost 75 cents a dollar and you really ought to change them probably once a month if you're using your furnace regularly. What happens, partly what happens, if this is dirty, the system can't pull the air that it needs. So it's gonna start pulling it from wherever it can get. It's gonna increase pressure on the furnace, which could lead it to break. And it's also gonna pull from all the air leaks. Now I can see right away, there's a few air leaks around here. And it's gonna pull from those places, possibly those corners too. I would seal up all the corners, all the joints, because the more clogged this gets, the filter gets, the more it's gonna pull the air from wherever it can, which is gonna be through these cracks and through other places where the ducts are leaking and then it's put, pulling in very cold air and heating that up which costs more money. You might have a return in the floor. What you're looking at here is where the return used to be. This was covered up and air sealed. It's very important you want to air seal it with caulk. And this was the return. The downside of return in the floor is basically two things. One is that a return that's built into the floor joists tends to be very leaky and, and difficult to seal. The other thing is, because it's in the floor, a lot of dirt is going to fall in here. If this is where you have your filter also, that filter is going to get clogged up quickly. In this house, this was sealed up and the return was moved to here. It's important if you do seal it up to air seal all the edges. Use some caulk and make sure it's a good air seal. This is the return grill. This is where the air is sucked from the house back through the ducts, back through the furnace or heat pump to be heated and sent into the supplies. It's very important that your return is big enough because any furnace is designed to be putting out an equal amount of air that it's pulling in. If it can't pull it in here, it's going to pull it in somewhere else. And that somewhere else will probably be where the unit is, down in your basement or up in your attic. In both those cases, it's gonna be much colder air and it takes much more energy to heat up that air as compared to this, which is still fairly warm air. Now we're gonna open this up and here's the filter. The filter usually is gonna be found right here behind the return grill. Now look at this filter, see how it's bowed in furnace is on right now so it's pulling that way and this furnace this filter is dirty enough that it's creating a bit of a vacuum behind it it's the air is having a hard time getting through this is why you want to keep your filter clean this is why you want to replace it 
at least once a month if you use this regularly. So we saw from inside the house the return grill. That return grill is attached to this. This is called the return plenum. So there's the grill up there and the air is sucked in this way and this way into here and back into the heat pump. From here it's reheated and it comes out through the supply plenum. From there into all the supply ductwork. From here there's branches like this one that go off into every room where there's a supply register. Now we've talked about duct insulation that's very important so you don't lose that heat before it gets to your house. We've talked a little about a duct ceiling. Now just to add to that, understand that duct ceiling is important not only so that the money you spent to heat air gets to where it's supposed to get, but also you can have pressure issues in your home. Now just for example, if you had what's called dominant supply leakage, which means most of the leakage is through these supply ducts, what's going to happen is not enough of the hot air is getting into your house. Meanwhile, the return is pulling as much as it's supposed to pull. So your house becomes depressurized. And when it's depressurized, it needs to get that extra air from somewhere. And it's going to get it through any hole or crack from your doors, from your windows, anywhere it can, that air is going to come and that air is going to be very cold. So you're decreasing the efficiency of your whole system a lot. This here, this is a supply register. This is where the hot air comes out if you have a ducted system. In this case, the ducts are down in the basement. Now it's very important for a couple of reasons to make sure the supplies are well sealed. So I'm going to take this off. Now this piece here, this all comes as one solid piece and it's called the boot. The boot is attached to all the duct work and this is what brings the air right into the room. You can see how much foam was put in here because the HVAC contractor who installed this just cut a huge hole. That's very typical. HVAC contractors don't tend to care much about air sealing. So have a look around your registers and see if there's any gaps. If the gap's small, you can seal it with caulk. The best thing is mastic that's really designed for ducts and it will last the longest of any material. If the gaps are big, you could use two-part foam or one-part foam like this is. But you really want to make sure this is sealed. This is both an air sealing issue Plus, it's a heating efficiency issue because if you have hot air coming up here and you add these big gaps here, that hot air is going to hit this and some of that hot air is going to bounce back and go down into the basement or your attic, whatever the case, and not be usable. So you've spent money to heat that air that's not actually going into your house to warm you up. So this is an easy fix and a very, very, very important one. This is unusual. Most registers you find are rectangular, about that big, roughly. Um, but it still is a supply register and it has the exact same function as a rectangular one. It's just round. This is where the hot air comes out in the winter or the cold air, if you also use air conditioning. Over there, I see this, the boot to the supply register in the kitchen that we saw from the kitchen side. Now I see a couple of things. One is that I see that the boot itself is not insulated. That's typical and it would save you a lot of money to make sure all the exposed boot is properly insulated. Another thing is that it doesn't look like the flex duct is tightly wrapped around it. So there again, something easy to do. You get zip line, zip, zip straps and you wrap it around and you just tighten it. With the mastic is better. If your ducting is up here, like it is in this attic, then here it is. This is, this is the flex line, flex duct. It's going to be throughout the whole attic. If you do have a forced air furnace, the bulk of your ducting is either going to be up here in the attic or down in the crawl or basement. Depends on how they set the system up. You're going to want to look at all the connections of the flex duct, where it connects to the furnace, where it connects to the boot, where there's junctions, 
Make sure those connections are tight, which means there's not air, hot air leaking out into the attic. Also, make sure they're insulated. Typically around the boots and around the junctions, that's a place that isn't very insulated. Flex duct, by definition, is insulated. But if you have hard metal piping for your ducting, it probably isn't. And that's a great, great, great thing to do is to insulate around all those pipes. This here, this is the return. This is where the air from that return grill is coming through back into the system to be recycled. Now, a couple of things. One, you see that all of this boot and all of this area is uninsulated. It doesn't matter as much as with the supply. With the supply, it's much more important to keep it insulated. But here too, it's worth your while to insulate it. But the other thing I want to point out is this, duct tape. Duct tape, although people think it was designed for ducts, it actually wasn't. It got that name because it was originally made with a type of cotton called duct cotton. It's not a good material for the ducts because it fails quickly especially as temperatures change, the glue in duct tape dries up and it'll fail and it'll fall off. What you really want to use there is the mastic. Mastic will last you many, many years. This just won't. And then you have leakage and then you're pulling air from the attic or you're blowing hot air into the attic.